This is Ron Olch, developer of UFO Data Acquisition Systems in support of the UFO Data Acquisition Project. The purpose of UFO DAC is to develop systems for the widespread deployment of equipment for scientifically valid UAP data collection. Historically, the collection of UFO data has been an after-the-fact process, meaning it's been a matter of field investigators collecting information from random witnesses. The reliability and history of that kind of data is often difficult to evaluate objectively. The provenance of those witness reports and any photos and videos they may offer, therefore, may be quite questionable. In addition, coincident environmental effects are usually not measured at the time of the sighting, if at all. And also, the only way to take advantage of a high incidence area is to dedicate more and more human resources, such as 24-7 deployed trained observers or collect more of the same sort of unreliable data from previously unknown individuals. Advancing scientific ufology would be by means of reduction or elimination of these kinds of issues by the use of automated collection of real-time UFO data by equipment that has been scientifically calibrated and is in the field 24-7, 365 as needed. So what would be the requirements for a fully automated UAP data collection system? Well, for one thing, it needs to be unattended, in continuous operation for the long term in all kinds of weather conditions. Its operation should be possible in both populated and remote locations. Uh, and its system operation and data analysis, therefore, needs to be potentially quite remote from where the sensors are located. The system architecture should provide for a wide range of cost and complexity that allows for expansion without waste to meet all sorts of uh, user needs. All the sensor data collected should be geolocated and time locked for analysis. The system should provide for the automated notification of researchers when events are recorded and provide for doc documented common data formats for use with third party software tools for example, Excel spreadsheets. Most importantly, the capabilities of all of the sensors should be appropriate for UAP data collection. What kinds of sensors would we want for UFO data collection? Well, we have a combination of relatively limited funding, a highly unknown nature of the phenomenon, a low probability of collecting useful data at any one location in a known fashion, and therefore the need to have a lot of locations for a long period of time. Therefore, we should make trade-offs between the cost and complexity and the sensitivity of the sensors that we might use. Therefore, it's reasonable to leverage the nature of the phenomenon. That is, it seems to have very high levels of energy or changes above the background and therefore we might be able to save money and size and so on by reducing sensor uh, data rates and sensitivities. Overall then the kinds of sensors we would want would of course be frame rate video. We want to be able to detect perturbations in magnetic and gravitational fields, uh, see changes or emanations in the radio frequency spectrum, we might want to measure optical spectra, and we may want to also do still and video imaging in non-visible spectra, such as the near IR. In addition, we may want to uh, listen for and record acoustic anomalies. When recording UFO data, one quickly finds out that a lot of data is collected that is not of much interest. Therefore, it's desirable to have methods that automatically, as much as possible, reduce the volume of that useless data. Some means to do that, used by UFODAP software, include 
introducing various qualifications of the conditions to initially collect the data at all, such as drawing a boundary box around the video image so that uh, uh, changes outside that box don't trigger collection. Also, UFODAP software utilizes several different methods of artificial intelligence, such as deep learning, to try to identify objects in videos that are common. Label them as, for example, birds or aircraft, and therefore allow the researcher to um, not spend time looking at those particular files, at least initially. A lot of such data are of mundane objects that you wouldn't want to spend a lot of time looking at. The UFO Data Acquisition Project provides systems that meet these requirements today. You can see all of this information on the website ufodap.com. On the website, you can see explanation of the concepts, descriptions of the technology and the architecture, as well as a lot of downloadable documentation and samples of collected video. You can also enter the UFODAP shop by means of a link from the home page in which you can see all of the hardware and software and systems that are currently available for creating your own data collection system. UFODAP also has a collaborative arrangement with another group known as UFO Data who is currently developing a sophisticated um, s method for uploading collected video and other kinds of data and providing the means for researchers to analyze that data resulting in proper scientific analysis and ultimately publication. The UFODAP systems concept or methodology was designed to provide users with all the tools they need to collect UAP data and then get out of the way, let them collect it, and then upload the data that they think is important on their own. Some of the key concepts are to provide users with plug-and-play systems and components, no construction or programming skills required to put it together. Uh, all the data may be collected on the user's own computer, that is the user owns the data and can upload whatever they find of interest to UFO data for analysis later or not as they wish. Uh, users will be able to participate in a community of research associates uh, providing data for detailed analysis uh, with, as they think is worthy of interest. We also want to provide users with the tools uh, to filter data during and after data collection to reduce their effort to find the portion of all the data they collect that may be useful. We also want to provide an option for UFODAP computing assets to collect data remotely if the user does not want to own and operate their own software. In other words, you can set up a camera or other data collection units and be responsible for it and own it, but you may not want to run the UFODAP software and therefore just what's called port forward it so that a remote user, yourself or someone else, actually runs the software that continuously monitors and collects the data. Finally, the hardware is designed for very long-term environmental exposure in all kinds of weather conditions in order to withstand continuous outdoor exposure while collecting data in the long term. The architecture of a UFO data acquisition system very flexibly accommodates many combinations of data acquisition units, software, and intercommunication processes. Currently there are two kinds of data acquisition units. One is a PC running the OTDA, OTDAU or Optical Tracking Data Acquisition Unit and the other type of DAU is a MSDAU or Multi-Sensor Data Acquisition Unit which collects non-optical data. In larger systems or when DAUs are remote from computing facilities, computing facilities the DAUs connect to those facilities by means of the Internet that is the Wide Area Network or WAN. In the cases of smaller systems data acquisition units directly connect to local PCs by their local area network or LAN. In other words, they're connected wired, they're connected wired or wirelessly to their router which in turn their PC is connected to.
So in this illustration, a DAU might represent a PC and a single camera, for example. The PC would be running the OTDAU software to collect data from the camera. When multiple DAUs are used together, or one wants to do triangulation of targets, then two copies of OTDAU with their, indiv their individual cameras connect to a PC either locally or remotely and end up being collected or monitored by another piece of software called Mission Control. Mission Control has the capability of monitoring up to six DAUs as well as doing the computation to triang triangulate positions of targets in real time from multiple cameras. To summarize, the UFODAS architecture provides for two kinds of data acquisition units currently. The first was an optical tracking DAU, which provides all the functionality to detect, track, stream, analyze, and record video streams from all kinds of cameras. Those cameras might be fixed lens, all sky cameras, pan tilt zoo cameras, USB webcams, and the like. The second kind of DAU is the multi-sensor DAU, or MSDAU. It collects non-optical data continuously and includes internal sensors such as those to measure uh, changes to the magnetic field, gravitational field. Uh, it also includes GPS for location and time, and it also can collect changes to the RF spectrum. The computing, communication, and packaging architecture of the MSDAU makes it very easy to include quite different hardware and software in the future to support additional kinds of sensors. The optical tracking, or OTDAU, software supports a wide range of cameras. Besides any camera that has a USB interface, it also supports the kinds of cameras shown here, which include pan tilt zoom cameras with different uh, field of view and optical zoom capabilities, fixed cameras, sometimes with higher fixed and wider angle uh, imaging fields of view, and fisheye cameras or panoramic cameras, which cover the complete 360 degree field of view uh, and 180 above and below. In general, these UFODAP cameras have very uh, sensitive um, sensing chips that can detect low levels of light and any camera can be uh, physically switched, uh, be able to detect so-called black and white or near IR wavelengths. All the cameras operate over a single Ethernet cable using a standard known as PoE or power over Ethernet. That is the cable carries both the Ethernet signal and power for the camera, making it a lot easier to uh, set up and wire for fixed installations or tear down if it's a field installation. This is the OTDAU software shown after loading with a Dawa 42212 PTZ camera. The upper left wide angle video display shows the camera view and layered on top of which is metadata. This information recorded along with the video image includes the date, and time, type of camera, resolution, zoom value, and so on. The right hand or auxiliary video display shows various kinds of displays based on the push buttons shown below it. Shown here is the video display which is the same as the wide angle except not encumbered with the metadata overlay. One can also select a telephoto view which is a digitally zoomed version of whatever is being tracked. A tracking display which shows how the internal tracking process is working a path display which draws a series of boxes which illustrate the path that the target took while flying through the field of view. And finally a spectral display which is in development that shows a optical spectrum of the video, video image in real time. On the lower left there are controls to move the camera to its initial tracking position as well as 
creating a rectangular or circular bounding box to limit the area that the camera can be detecting motion. Uh, you can see in this case that bounding box, which is shown with a, as a blue rectangle when the system's not running, uh, is drawn such that it avoids the foliage below, which might be moving in the wind. The status box on the lower right is a continuous running series of messages which shows what the system is currently doing and is helpful for determining what the system is doing at any moment or if there are any error conditions. This is an example of OTDAU software utilizing a pan tilt zoom camera to detect, lock onto, and continuously track and zoom into a moving target. OTDAU software includes the ability to analyze collected videos by means of deep learning or AI data analytics functions. This analysis can be selected to run automatically after each tracking event or as a batch of a lot of tracking events sometime later. The software attempts to categorize each video as to whether it is a bird or an aircraft and if an aircraft it may be able to do that both during day and night conditions. As an option it can automatically modify each folder name to include its estimated a detection category and its confidence level. For example, it might categorize a video as aircraft 55% or it might categorize it as unknown 0% if it doesn't fit any of its known uh, identification criteria. The primary purpose of all of, the, all of this analysis is to unburden the uh, data collector from the onerous task of going through a large number of videos and deciding which are worthy of further analysis. That is, one might start by looking at the videos labeled unknown rather than the ones labeled as aircraft. Here is an example of the process of analyzing a batch of videos. The multi-sensor data acquisition unit is another type of DAU. It consists of a Raspberry Pi embedded computer and other electronics housed in an environmentally sealed enclosure with environmental connectorization. All power and signal uh, via Ethernet are over a sing single cable using the PoE standard. The MSDAU may be tripod, wall, pole, or corner mounted. Oftentimes it's combined with a camera on a single tripod mount. The MSDAU includes a number of sensors, including a 3 degree of freedom gyroscope, 3 degree of freedom accelerometer, 3 degree of freedom magnetometer, as well as a barometer, temperature sensor, and humidity sensor the three of, of those uh, sensing internal conditions in the MSDAU for determining the unit's health. A GPS receiver and antenna are included for providing the real-time location of the MSDAU as well as providing time of day. In addition, the MSDAU includes an internal software-defined radio receiver for measuring the ongoing background RF spectra. 
there are three options for this. One is no radio at all. Uh, the two others, though, are one type of receiver that can cover about 25 megahertz to 1750 megahertz, and a second option for about 25 megahertz to 6000 megahertz. External antennas that match these bandwidths are also available. Mounting methods are available for both cameras and MSDAUs either on a tripod or on a building pole or on a tower. Shown here is an MSDAU combined with a 12 times optical zoom pan tilt zoom camera co-mounted on an assembly that allows both of them to be mounted on a common high stability tripod such as those used by surveyors. UFODAP mission control software provides a means for pulling together data from up to six DAUs simultaneously. It has the ability to triangulate data from two o OTDAUs uh, and displaying the location of all DAUs and the triangulation information on a real-time moving Google map. Shown here are real-time interfaces to two OTDAUs with two independent cameras and two MSDAUs. As alternates to the various map views, the software includes optional buttons to display real-time MSDAU data, as well as a thumbnail and larger view of each video coming from an OTDAU. The current version of the software also has controls to view the real-time RF spectrum from any particular MSDAU. It also has buttons to select alternates to the map, which are a real-time updated display of all aircraft within 10 miles of the DAUs. Data about each aircraft is shown in a table view, also as icons on the moving map. In addition, the current view, current view also has the capability to display as a table all the data about current weather conditions at the location of each DAU. Extensive recording options allow the system to record all the data from all the DAUs simultaneously once any one of them goes into a triggering condition. A trigger for an OTDAU is the start of a tracking event. A trigger for an MSDAU uh, may be any uh, signal that it's measuring that arises above a predetermined uh, user-specified level. The moving map may also be recorded as a video. This is a summary of mission control functions. Note that OTDAU software is all that's needed if one only wants to record a camera for target tracking purposes. The mission control software is required for two reasons. One is when one has one or more MSDAUs. Since emission control is the way that all the data from MSDAU is collected and displayed. The other reason is when one wants to combine simultaneous inputs from two OTDAUs and their cameras in order to do real-time triangulation. Triangulation is accomplished by combining the geolocated position of each camera with its azimuth and elevation or pan and tilt angles. Using that data, mission control can determine the actual position above the Earth of the target and its velocity, as well as displaying the estimated size of the object. Both Mission Control and OTDAU simultaneously record their own data on the local hard drives of whatever computer is running the software. Both OTDAU and Mission Control can email up to three people whenever a tracking or target event occurs. Here's an example of mission control triangulating data from two independent cameras provided using two different instances of OTDAU software. 
Note that due to the flexibility of the UFO-DAS system architecture, those cameras and the computers they are running on could be local to uh, the mission control software, the OT OTDAU instances and mission control could all be running on the same computer or the two different OTDAUs and mission control could each be very distant from each other, even thousands of miles away, communicating over the internet. This is the mission control display after connection to an MSDAU. The display plot button for that MSDAU has been selected. The map display is then replaced by a series of plots of all the data coming from that MSDAU. All of these values can be seen to be changing in real time as they change at the MSDAU. They can also be recorded as a Excel spreadsheet compatible CSV file. The CSV file would start to be recorded when this, that MSDAU achieved a triggered condition as shown here. It's triggered because one of those values at least uh, changed such that it exceeded a percent difference set by the user in the configuration for that MSDAU. This is the mission control display for real-time RF spectrum data coming from the MSDAU. The user has selected the bandwidth for the software-defined radio in the MSDAU to cover a range of 88 to 108 megahertz. He has also specified that the triggering level for anomalous signals is at 10 dB. Normally, the way the trigger level would be set is to run the MSDAU and observe this display, noting the maximum peak values of the RF signals. In this case, there's a peak at 94.7 MHz at about 20 dB. Thus, the user might pick a minimum trigger level of, say, 25 dB, such that if any anomalous uh, energy occurred above that level, that would cause the triggering condition and that would result in the recording of a CSV compatible file of a continuously running um, frequency versus power and time uh, data file. This is the mission control aircraft flight data display. All of this data is displayed for the first six of all of the flights that are in the vicinity. The total number of flights is shown on the bottom. The data includes the aircraft's call sign, longitude and latitude, altitude, and position source. The position source is typically ADSB. Note that Mission Control does not have its own ADSB receiver. Rather, all of this data is derived from an API from a website that updates about every 10 seconds. Like other data, all aircraft data is recorded as a CSV file at the time of an event. All aircraft within the boundaries of the currently displayed map are shown on the map as icons with their call sign. The Mission Control map display may also be used to display a list of weather data. Weather conditions in the vicinity of each DAU are shown and are based upon the geolocation that the system makes of that DAU. This data may also be recorded as a CSV file at the time of an anomalous event. This illustrates the Mission Control map view of aircraft data. Each aircraft is shown as an icon with its call sign and altitude. All of these icons move every time there is an update to all the aircraft positions. UFODAS is continually evolving to provide additional features of the existing software and also new hardware and software options. Currently, the OTDAU software can utilize not one but two cameras simultaneously. Typically, the wide camera might be an all-sky camera and the secondary telephoto camera might be a pan-tilt zoom unit. 
and uh, it's possible to set the system into a handoff mode in which when an object is first detected by the all sky camera it points the pan tilt zoom camera in the same vicinity uh, that's calculated from its position in the panoramic view the PTZ camera then makes its own real-time object detection and then continuously tracks and zoom to it as if it was the only camera on the system. A new development that's sort of an offshoot of that is the ability to use a independent pan tilt head with no dedicated cameras. Uh, one then mounts on one side of the pan tilt head, uh, for example, a wide angle fixed camera, uh, which is essentially the wide camera in OT and OTDAU, and on the other side of the pan tilt uh, might be a high-resolution SLR or an infrared camera or even another kind of sensor. When the system detects an object of interest in the fixed camera, it then points both cameras at that object as it's tracking and proceeds to record both the wide camera and the auxiliary camera at the same time. Since the MSDAU has two external high-speed USB interfaces, it has the potential for adding additional external sensors. Those sensors might include acoustic sensors, uh, sensors for measuring ionizing radiation, or more sophisticated differential magnetometers, for example. I'm also looking into supporting standardized DSLR camera shutter controls. With that, the user could set up a timed shutter release schedule that would begin when a tracking event occurs. Additionally, enhanced methods of using AI to distinguish known targets from unknowns and new ways to reduce the need for the user to specify tracking parameters are also in development. This is another example of simultaneous object tracking and zooming. Note the relatively small size of the object and the relatively low resolution setting of the camera at only 1280 by 720. In contrast to the last video, here is a fixed camera with a higher resolution tracking a small moving object. In general, there's a trade-off between the higher resolution and wider angle of some fixed cameras versus pan-tilt zoom cameras. Fixed cameras such as this can track objects that move faster than what a PTZ camera might track because there's no physical motion involved. This video illustrates how the system can provide a stabilized, digitally zoomed version of the tracked object. This digitally zoomed image may be simultaneously recorded with the original wide camera image. UFODAP has a 30 times optical zoom, pan tilt zoom camera mounted on a remote site in the San Luis Valley, Colorado. The camera has been port forwarded by a local ISP or serv internet service provider so that I can operate it from a remote location in Los Angeles. Note the clarity and frame rate that can be achieved even with a very remote camera.